Hey everyone, this is Willem with another, hopefully, quite interesting video. Now, if you've seen the title of this video, you might be thinking, wasn't this channel about psychology? What the fuck? This is not a tutorial on how to be a good stripper or how to dance more sensual or I'm not going to give you advice on how to do your makeup or your stripper clothing because I'm not the right person for that. I mean, I never tried being a stripper, but I assume I'm not very good at it. As usual, I will just be talking about evolution and biology and science because some researchers actually wrote a paper on strippers. And if you're an actual stripper looking for some good advice, I might have a tiny bit of advice for you at the end of the video, so make sure you watch the entire video. Welcome to Brains Applied. This video talks about the menstrual cycle. Now I do know that about 70% of my viewers are men who might not be very familiar with menstruation, so let's quickly refresh your mind because if you ever get married or if you ever have children, you might want to know this. Almost every female mammal species has a cycle in which they switch between stages of being fertile and not being fertile. Yet only 10 primate species, including humans, 4 bat species, the elephant shrew and 1 species of spiny mice has an actual menstrual cycle. Female homo sapiens, also known as women, have a menstrual cycle of on average 28 days. The first day of the cycle is always the day on which women start menstruating or bleeding, which usually lasts for 5 to 7 days. Now, this blood is not regular blood like when you accidentally chop off your hand with a lawnmower. It's a mix of blood and mucosal tissue coming from the uterus, which is the part where babies grow. On day 14, the egg cell is released into the fallopian tubes, after which it lives for about 24 hours. By eye, male sperm can survive 3 to 5 days in a woman's reproductive system. The egg cell then travels through the tubes towards the uterus, which takes about a week. And if a sperm cell has joined the egg cell within 24 hours of being released, the fertilized egg will nest itself in the mucosal tissue of the uterus and grow to become a full-fledged baby. When this isn't the case, the egg cell will die and decay together with the mucosal tissue, and this causes the menstruation on day one of the cycle. The menstrual cycle comes with a lot of hormonal changes, which can cause cramps, headaches, and all of those kind of things that women sometimes have. In many animals, they also cause sexual swellings. Female baboons, for example, get a nice red Kim Kardashian butt, which signals, hi there, I'm fertile, around the time of their ovulation. But women don't have sexual swellings, they have what is called a concealed ovulation. Except for the fact that that's not really true. Women do show some very subtle signs that may unconsciously be perceived by men. One study, for example, found that women's soft tissue becomes more symmetrical during their fertile period. Another study found that men prefer the faces of women in the ovulation stage in comparison to women who aren't ovulating at that point. Yet another study tested what happened if men were showed pictures of the bodies of clothed women with their self-picked clothes. For each lady, the researchers took a picture during and after a fertile period and once again, the pictures that were taken during the ovulation were preferred in 60% of the cases, just because of the way the female subjects dressed and posed. And yet, other studies found that women's body scent is more attractive during their fertile period. They apparently tested this by letting men smell t-shirts worn by women. Yeah, I know, it's, it's kinda creepy. Yet, all those studies were lab studies. They're taken out of their real-life context and they're conducted in a lab where every part of the background, like lighting or background noise, can be controlled. Which makes you wonder, are the effects that were found in the lab strong enough to outweigh all the environmental variables that are present in real life? 
So three brave scientists decided to go on a noble quest in the search for real life evidence in a strip club. Strip clubs are actually pretty great and not just because of the skimpy dressed ladies but also as the testing ground for such theories. Everything in a strip club is about being attractive and seducing men, which is exactly what the researchers needed. And all strippers are wearing makeup, they're dressed in a sexy way and they're highly motivated to seduce more guys in order to make more money. Which limits the differences between strippers. In the meanwhile, the money that the strippers have received for lap dancers is a pretty good indicator of how well they are liked by the visitors. So the researchers found a bunch of strippers who, during a period of 60 days, wrote down the amount of money that they earned each shift and whether they had begun or ceased to menstruate. This is the average income on each single day of the average menstrual cycle. As you can see, there is a massive increase in income in the period just before their ovulation. Which is actually quite logical for men because egg cells only live one day and sperm lives longer. So biologically it's smart for men to have sex with women in advance of the ovulation. If you split the days of the cycle in three broad categories, you see this. Strippers earn the most while doing shifts during their fertile period which became lower during the luteal phase, which is the non-fertile period, and their income was extra low during their menstruation. So if you're a stripper, you might want to work some extra hours the days just before and after your ovulation. But wait, there is more. I haven't shown everything yet. The researchers differentiated between strippers who were using a hormonal contraception pill and those who weren't. This line averages the income of strippers who weren't using the pill. This line shows the average income per shift of the strippers who did use the pill. As you can see, they always earn quite a bit less, on average $80 per shift. And of course, there is a pretty good explanation for this difference. A contraceptive pill puts your body in some state of hormonal pseudo-pregnancy, which limits the effects of your hormones on your body and your behavior. As you might behave slightly different, and because your body doesn't show the very subtle cues of fertility to men, you may earn way less than strippers who don't use birth control because you're just not as interesting. So if you're a stripper who wants to earn a lot of money, you might not want to use a hormonal birth control pill. And that my friends is all I wanted to tell you today. I hope you liked this video, if you did press the like button and of course don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you receive a 100% free notification next time when I upload a new video. Oh, and if you got some spare time, leave some feedback in the comments. I really appreciate it and it keeps me motivated to make more videos. And I will see you guys later.